You're watching IT Pro TV. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cool Features in Windows 10, where we explore some new features coming out uh, and share our favorites with you. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Mean? Adam Gordon, because he's gonna tell us, and me hopefully, what we've got in store for this episode. I have something cool in store for this episode. I've been rummaging around in that big box we keep back there. I actually dragged my back with me into the <laughs> vault, and we were rummaging through, and he said, oh, what the heck's this one? And we pulled it out, we're like, yeah, that's cool, we should do that. And then we threw that one away. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna do something else. We actually got a cool one for you in this episode. If you saw our episode on the translator, the Edge Translator extension, I actually hinted at what this episode would be, because we said there's two extensions we would look at, uh, and the mouse gestures extension was the one that I just previewed quickly and searched for and said, oh yeah, not right now, but we're gonna come back to another episode on that one. This is another one of the browser extensions that I found as I was working my way through some of the needs I have when I'm using uh, and interacting with and trying to be productive, keyword trying, be productive <laughs> with Windows 10. And you know, I find, and, and Mike and I were talking about this, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, I don't use a mouse that often, at least I haven't for a long time. Cue the fact that I do have a mouse for this demonstration. <laughs> and it is an old school mouse because it has a searchlight on the bottom as well. Uh, but you know, Mike, I'm gonna borrow your mouse for yep. just a second. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike has this cool newfangled technology mouse that doesn't have wires. Uh, and he even offered to let me borrow it. But I said, no, I don't want to <laughs> I do know, I that. Uh, but you know, the reality is I I'm a track pad kind of person. You do I like your touchpad, don't you? I do. I do not use mice. Mm -hmm. I have not for a long time. But there are some occasions where I do have a need for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and although it's not something I spend a lot of time with, I know a lot of people that do use mm -hmm. mice on a regular basis. And so I thought, you know, this will be one of those things that would be cool at least to be aware of. And maybe as we were talking about, a lot of work to get this to the point where it becomes second nature. I'll be totally transparent with you. Some of these gestures, I cannot get to work no matter what I do. <laughs> but some of them, a few of them, the ones I'm going to show you so I look good, right? The ones I can I practice and actually work do work well. We agreed. It, it is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it may not be the most uh, the most easily understood and used thing. We'll leave it up to you. We'll, you'll let you decide. But join me here if you will. So when we go in, just like we did in our Edge Translator episode, we can go in and search in the Microsoft Store. And you can see right up here, I'll just zoom in so you can see it. I'm in the Microsoft Store and I've searched for mouse gestures. And again, I've already installed the extension. Uh, and I went through in the last episode, I'll just quickly tell you about it here. Uh, this, if you've never searched in the store, will initially say uh, that you have to uh, either add to cart, which would be the button down here roughly where wishlist is and or get uh, this and then once you do that you may have to do a purchase it's free you just have to go through the process with a zero dollar checkout to grab a license you're really just encumbering a license for use uh, and then you can install so you do all that in the store directly and then once all that's done uh, you're then able to use the extension now just like we talked about with the translation extension I've got the Edge browser open, and I'm actually open on the settings page for this extension, but I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see it. You'll see it loads the extension right over here, so I can see it right there, and I can actually pull it up right here and get to settings, which will load this page. Uh, and there is also, though I didn't tell Mike about this, there's actually gesture capability for pen gestures as well as mice. Now that I ah. think would be valuable for people that do have the ability to use an, on a, a, a screen. or a pen of some You've got kind. that yeah. capability, for instance, mm -hmm. on your machine. I don't, yep. uh, but you know, you could enable that. I you know, would not turn it on on mm -hmm. mine. But you do have that option here. In addition, you can also get to this just by going into the extensions area right here in the settings of the browser, the way we did in the last episode. Just scroll down so you can see that. And it is right up near the top, depending on when you installed it. I installed the translator first and then the gestures one second. So when you go to do that and you turn this on, it will tell you that you do have to close the browser and open it in order for this to in uh, instantiate and work again. So just be aware of that. But you get to settings right from here as well. Uh, and it does tell you a little bit more just about the extension. You could see that you can turn it on right down here. We can enable that show button next to the address bar, which is what I did. Can uninstall, obviously. But I like this one because we were talking about this with the translator yes. option mm -hmm. where we looked at it. We looked at it after the episode. 
Uh, but there is no option to allow the translator extension to work for in-private browsing when through, and it does not initialize because that's one of the key things with the in-private browsing features, it blocks almost all extensions. But you could selectively enable certain ones. Not everybody knows that. Hmm. And this one, because it's not really accessing information, right? right? It's really just uh, essentially a operational capability that allows you to interact with opening pages and closing them and moving through the tabs, things like that. So it's like a function of the browser directly. Uh, it can be enabled because it's not really accessing data. So as a result, we could turn that on for in-private browsing, which I think is actually kind of cool. If I'm going to use this, I want it to be available in all of my uh, potential browsing areas. Yeah, right? absolutely. You start getting used to one of those shortcuts and using those gestures, and then all of a sudden they're not working just because you've launched an in-private tab. Uh, no fun at all. Absolutely. So I just clicked on the options button just to bring up the settings tab so you could see it again. I already had it open. It's the same exact thing. I was just scrolled down. Uh, but once you go to the settings area, you will see that we can, again, enable and disable. We can also specify that we have to hold down the right click button on the side of the pen if we're using pen gestures mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So again, you would just have a little bit of a separate area for the pen. There are some advanced settings, as you can see and you can enable or disable those. I have the gesture tracking capability on, so as I use the gestures and I draw, you're gonna see like the, the line uh -huh. actually appear for the gesture, you know, over to the right and up or something. I've left that on so you could see me do that. That I find when I talk to people about this, it's oh, kind of annoying. So you could turn it off, it gets like the training wheels, right? Uh, that's what you I was just gonna to say. It it's like, so you yeah. can kind of learn your gestures and go, oh, no wonder it's not working. I'm not making that gesture quite right. Oh, it's the other left, yeah. not that one. I'm just exactly, the other they're, they're so, so confusing with all these lefts, so. Yeah, so I, I, I leave it on, or at least I have left it on for the demo, but I do find a couple of times I've actually used this for real. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had it turned off because it is very distracting. It goes right over the top, whatever you're doing. And so you'll see that, but I've left that on just so you know where that is, okay? Uh, and let me just zoom back out here. So you'll see that these gestures are broken out into a couple of different categories. They have what they call, what I say they, I mean Microsoft has termed basic gestures, and then there's advanced gestures. Uh, and the nice thing is these are just drop down lists and you could see that we could remap this action. This action would be, you know, hold down the right mouse key and then essentially draw this up and over to the left arrow mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, essentially motion and that will switch to previous tab. But I can remap that and say, oh, I don't want that to switch to previous tab. I want that to close current tab or something. Mm -hmm. So you can remap these if you choose to. That is up to you. So let me show you what I mean here. So right now I'm on, and let's just close one of these tabs so that we can see, I'm on the mouse gestures tab, right? If I do this up and to the right, which I'll do in a minute, it will switch to the next tab, which means if you follow the logic here, I'm at the end of the row, it should switch to this first tab right here, which is the start tab, which is whatever the news headlines are for the day. So I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button, which is what I'm about to do, and I'm gonna go up, as you can see the trail, and notice, as I start to go up, notice what's happening on the screen. I haven't done anything yet except go up, and go up by itself is the shortcut for scroll up, and it pops that little Box up so and says, like oh, you're thinking you want to do that. But now I'm going over and notice in, uh, in real time, it is switched to next tab because I made that gesture uh -huh. and you could see that now, right? Now I'm going to zoom out just so you could see that it does switch. So I'm going to let go and sure enough, it switches to that tab, like in a carousel function, right. right? But it tells you if you slow down enough to kind of realize, mm -hmm. right? And you leave the tips on. That was what another one of the advanced settings was leave those tips on so you could see the pop-up box so it tells you what's right. going on. Again, I, I tend to turn those off when I'm actually using this for real. But if you do it slowly and you see the tracking with the line and the tip, you can practice like we were saying and say, oh, okay, so that's how I would get that one to work because that's the action or the motion, right? Mm -hmm. That I would need to do that. So it's actually kind of nice um, to do that, or at least I think it's nice a nice way to learn. If I want to switch to previous tab, that's going to be up and to the left instead of to the right. So let's go here, right? Mm -hmm. And let's go, I'm gonna hold down the right arrow again. I'm gonna go up, hold on one second. I'm gonna go up and to the left, except that is not what I wanted. See, this is the issue I run into <laughs> sometimes with this is, oh, okay, hold on, let me go back here. 
Let me try because we can see that. And then it goes that way. Oh, right? Because yep. it's not the previous one from here. There's right. no previous one. It's not going to roll the other way. Right? Because okay. there's nothing before that's the right. first tab. That's why it's not working. Should have thought of that. Makes Silly. Sense. I need more fingers and toes to count with. I mean, you can see it does work. So I have to be in the right line order to be able to get that to move. So I can move these things around and I can remap. I think this is, you know, it, it's functional at a certain level. I don't know if I would say this is, I got to run out and get this because it's going to change my life cool. You know, I, I think this is really going to depend on how you use your system and what you're used to. Because I know a lot of people that are using that other operating system that has a bunch of cool features. That shall remain nameless. You, they might be more familiar with gestures because they have those magic pads and things like that. And Yeah, we don't like Macs, but that's okay. Yeah, I won't say that because yeah, we, no. we're not going to say the Mac. But the, those people might find this yeah. even more useful and it might be something that grows on you. You might at first find that, man, this is really clunky and odd. Because I know Dell has some gestures that you can enable on their little touch pads. And at first I was like, eh. Uh, and what they call a modern touchpad does have the pinch zoom capability yeah. regardless of OS. So yep. you get that, you do get that capability, which is nice, mm -hmm. even if you're just using Windows or a Dell or not yep. a Dell, a Mac, whatever. I, so I do have that capability, uh, which unfortunately happens sometimes when I'm not meeting it <laughs> right, too, which yeah, is a whole course, other yep. conversation. Yep. But it is nice, but again, it may be more of a limited thing. One more thing it before is. we, we mm -hmm. wrap up and vote on this one. I think you can already tell where the trending is going <laughs> on voting for me. But bring this back up for just a second. I just want to show you at the bottom of the screen. It's, it's, it's so far down and just almost the bottom, you don't even realize it. I'm just going to go down here and show it to you and zoom in. Uh, at the bottom, under some of the other gestures, mm. you can actually, if you have remapped these, I get this question sometimes, hey, I remapped all this stuff. I don't remember which is which, and you know, how do I get back to default? Somebody thought of that. Just reset uh, to default so you can re essentially remap your remapping and put everything back the way mm. it was. And if you don't like somebody, just go in and change all their mappings. Right? <laughs> that would also uh, really screw them up. All right, so uh, what do you, what do you, you go, you get to go first on right. this one this time. Well, so go uh, like I said, I think this is really going to depend on how you use your system and what you're used to. That's going to affect it. I love the remapping capabilities. Like I have, as you said, this fancy mouse with lots of buttons on there, and they come pre programmed to do certain things, but they're not the things that I find that I use more often. So the ability to remap a very easy gesture to something that I use more often than previous tab, maybe, I think cool. is a really cool idea. So the, the potential's there. I don't see me using it a lot, so I'm going to kind of go neutral on this one and leave it there. Yeah, I'm going I'm to do neutral, too. I'm, yeah. I'm not dissuaded from encouraging you to check it out and try right. it, but I, I see limited potential for me, right. but I can certainly see the potential for some people uh, that will find it. I think, although we didn't do the pen, uh, I've heard certainly from people yeah. that do use tablets and or pens that that would actually probably, I think, be more valuable maybe than yep. the mouse. So I'm thinking... It's there only because I don't use a tablet or a pen-like mm -hmm. capability. But if I did, I'm thinking I might move that up a little yep. bit. Uh, like between would... the two, I'd be like three-quarters. Yeah, Adam, I think we're on the same page there. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this cool new feature. Stay tuned for more coming your way. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.